If yeah. anybody's headphones are too loud, you can let me know and I'll drop the volume. Look at you. <laughs> I like that we just go into this assuming you Megan on the ones know and twos. how to do this. I, but I'm, very, I'm very impressed. You got a whole mix board there? Jesus. Yeah. What is that when, when somebody says that somebody's on the ones and twos? I've never heard that before. What? Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Megan on the ones and twos? You've heard that, right? Yeah. yeah. Isn't it like turntables or something? Uh, yeah, I think uh, it is. Uh, I'm not up for that Turntable one, turntable two. So this is the show. Uh, Are we it's, doing it's, it? It's yeah. begun. It's begun. Oh, we started? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. And we have no structure to it, so we're. I think we'll just we'll just talk. I think a structure will eventually emerge. Uh, mm -hmm. but you're sort gonna of like the show. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you're going to have to sit through quite a few episodes before it gets good. <laughs> just like the show. Just like the show, yeah. I was telling Rob earlier, just on a show-related thing, that I had some queso cheese on, oh. on Sunday. Today is Wednesday. Mm -hmm. How'd that do you? My stomach still hurts. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> so uh, very unlike my character. I just can't ever, I should never go anywhere near cheese. But okay, this is a conversation that we have had. This feels yeah, like- Yeah, because I'll keep doing it. I yes, keep doing it. Yes, yeah. we, we've had this conversation for, for 14 years. For I mean, 14 years. When was, well, when, no, early on, I didn't know it was the cheese that was messing me up. We knew it was something. Well, yeah. but you you also but you had an aversion to creamy things. You knew creamy things were related to. I do But he, <laughs> anytime anything creamy came across your plate, you were like, that, this, "This could be a problem." For I me. had a hunch, but it was a lazy hunch, like an alcoholic's, like I should probably stop drinking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, but doesn't do yeah. anything. So right. I was just like eating cheese willy nilly, and then I stopped and started feeling better. And then every now and then, I just I'm like, "Well, I could probably do it now." It's probably fine now. My yeah. stomach has learned. Yeah. Uh, as as you get older, your stomach generally gets stronger, right? I'll tame, yeah. I'll tame my stomach with cheese and cream. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Well, just like everything else, we had that conversation, then try to figure out a way to put it into the show, which is what we did by making your character obsessed with cheese. <laughs> also, weirdly, just it, it just right? just seems like some things are just funny. I, the it, word, yeah, cheese is funny. Cheese is funny. I don't funny. know why. Eggs. Eggs are funny. <laughs> Eggs are funny. I don't yeah. know why. You know what else is funny, guys? Racism. I was thinking this because I guess part of the structure is we'll watch an episode and talk about it. So mm. we, we just watched the first episode and mm -hmm. now we're talking about it. We never had any intention of that being our first episode, right? Like, no. That was, was that, that the second episode that was written? No, no, no. The no. second was Charlie Wants an Abortion. Was it? Yes. I thought yes. that was the right. third one that was written. No. No. Cancer and then we wrote Abortion. Yes. No. No. It was originally called The Gang Gets Hip. That was yes, originally the was, title for The Gang Gets Hip. It was worse. <laughs> <laughs> that, that title feels less appropriate. Um, but that was, FX was like, no, we should lead off with Well, this they thought that The Gang Gets Racist would be more accessible, <laughs> which is unbelievable. <laughs> now, anybody that understands what we're trying to do with the show recognizes what we're trying to do with that particular episode. And I would venture to say that in a lot of ways, we failed. It was, sure. but that's looking back on the lens of today as being 44 and being in 2021. And that was, I don't know how old, what, what year was that? 1983? The camera uh, seemed to suggest that it was. The camera suggests <laughs> it was 1983. However, it was in fact 2000, 2005. 2005 that aired. Yeah. 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 I think our hearts were in the right places, but maybe, um, Maybe there's a couple of things in there we'd probably adjust. Well, I think, you know, I think at that time, I think that we weren't as conscious of the fact, we knew we were making a show about bad people doing bad things and satirizing bad people doing bad things. And we certainly as people didn't endorse their behavior, but at the same time, I don't think we were quite as good at making it clear that the people who were creating the show were not also horrible people. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I or may, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I mean, I can't see it the way, obviously, the audience sees it. Well, so much of the show and so much of the characters is about ignorance. Like, so much of the comedy is coming from their their ignorance, which is a byproduct of their arrogance. Right. And so it's kind of funny to see the collision of those two things, these super arrogant people who are like, oh, I have these strong beliefs about why I'm right, mixed with this intense ignorance, and then you put that against the lens of race, it's mm -hmm. extraordinarily uncomfortable. But that was the show we were making. We are like, well, let's look at the things that we are all getting wrong. But then it, it's tough. It's a moving target. Things have changed so much to be like, well, even your way that you're trying to say this is wrong is wrong. And maybe that's fair. I don't know if that's fair. I don't yeah, know how I, I feel know. about it. I don't know. Please don't make me figure it all out. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not I, smart enough. I'm I, not smart I, enough. I, <laughs> I'm not. Right. Can we all acknowledge I think that's that? Fair. You know, like I think it's good to acknowledge that, okay to, that. Can I just yeah. say that, and then I'll never be in trouble? I'm like, guys, I'm not smart enough. I'm too dumb to know 
what I've done to wrong. To know well, the, I, the answers of now and the answers <laughs> of 15 years in the future. Yeah. We can definitely admit that we were trying our best. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. But but we did want to make a show. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, listen. Yeah, all joking. We were definitely trying our best because we we did we we were <laughs> relentless. Welcome to our sunny podcast apology tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where we're like, okay, this one. Uh, <laughs> look, how do we how do we broach this? <laughs> no, there's a lot of great stuff I, that I absolutely stand by in that episode. Same. I'd say Glenn, Glenn's drunk acting. That was really scary for me. I remember being there on the day. Scary. What do you mean? Well, because I was like, oh shit, this guy's good, <laughs> and I'm like, just try to keep up with him. I remember everybody talking about it. They were like, oh, man, that was really good drunk acting or whatever. And I was like, oh, I'm very proud of myself or whatever. But that was like before Charlie had had a chance to do any like real drunk acting. And certainly Caitlin had. And I mean, now it's like you guys' drunk acting blows mine out of the water. Or Danny on the plane when he's trying to chug down those beers. The box yeah. episode. Yeah. Drunk acting is not that hard. It is for me. Uh, I find it quite Well, difficult. acting in general for you is <laughs> <laughs> a challenge. A challenge. But that's... All the more impressive. Yeah. We're busting your balls. You're very good. Well, you can see me just trying to keep up. Well, in that scene, actually, ah, I would you're, argue. You're great I, in that scene. I, I, actually, it's one of my favorite scenes of yours in the early seasons. I would also like to say, for the record, like, I'm weirdly uncomfortable with my acting in the first two or three seasons of the show. Like, especially the first season. Like, I, I just don't think I'd found it yet. Like, I was, like, I think it was still, like, too, so, so concerned with everything feeling real that, like, wasn't willing yet to embrace the absurdity of what it could be at times. A perfect example of that actually is something that I wanted to cut from the episode that is has become like one of the most iconic moments from the first season where my character is concerned, at least in terms of comments I get, but is that the boys are out tonight spin move that I do when I grab that dollar bill. I think I did that one take where I did that. All the other, I didn't do that in any other take. I did that in one take just to make you guys laugh, just to do something outrageous, just to kind of, you know, mix things up. And then you guys wanted to put it in the show. And I was like, no, 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 no. That wasn't meant to be in the show. That was meant to make you guys laugh. That's insane. That's so broad. <laughs> right. That's so broad. We can't put that in the show. And, and you guys fought me on it, fought me on it. And finally, I was like, all right, fuck but it. But it's because you were unguarded and free. Yeah. And just, you know, that's going right. off instinct that it, it's funny. It yeah, when it took me a couple of years to learn that, like, oh, no, no, that's the, that's actually the thing. Is like, that should actually be my intention all, at all times as an actor, to try and make them laugh. Hmm. to do something as outrageous and unexpected as possible so that I can make the people that I work with laugh. That's certainly what we all started to adopt, and that's when the show got really fun, was when we stopped necessarily caring about what other people might think we should be doing with the show and just trying Mm -hmm. to make each other laugh. Quick shout out to Malcolm Barrett in yeah, the first episode. Yeah, uh, plays Terrell, who was my buddy from the Luis Guzman uh, short-lived sitcom that I think only three episodes aired. What's the name of that show? Louis. Louis. Yeah, Louis, his uh, Will Gluck show, the and, original uh, Louis, and Chris Miller and Phil Lord were writers on that. Uh, were like staff writers on oh that show. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. I was like, these guys are funny, man. I remember I came to the recording of one of those episodes, the first time I had ever seen a television show recorded live, and and PT and PT Anderson was there. What? Will Thomas Anderson was outside, and I smoked a cigarette near him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he likes high art, and we were making. Yeah, I have some. I have art, a, kind high, of a, the highest art form. Uh, a related experience when I was doing that '80s show, uh, I got to share a cigarette with Booger oh, from yeah. Revenge of the Nerds, uh, like which is kind of on the same on par with having a cigarette with Paul Thomas Anderson. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know? I again, I just want to be clear. I was near him while he was smoking, <laughs> oh. and I too was smoking. Right. Right. Yeah. So we were sharing it. And I it like was on this night, Mister Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Was he fucking 10 years old? What happened? Yeah, yeah Rob was 10 years old. In that, in that, in that <laughs> imagination of the scenario. So, season what? one, episode one. I mean, the show is so different without Danny. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's so different without him. It's like a completely... Well, certainly in this episode, for better or for worse, we are much closer to resembling actual human beings than what we than what we quickly become in season three or four. You mean in terms of our, our behavior? Yes. In terms of the character's <laughs> behavior. Like we're we're presenting people who might actually exist. Uh-huh. And even though that they are the most terrible person on earth, they were still presenting them as being somewhat real. Yeah, they were much more grounded in like the actual reality of the world as opposed to what it became, which is kind of its own reality. Well it's a real bar and they wanted to do better business and they, you know, hire this guy and then it becomes a gay bar and they're uncomfortable with that or they're comfortable with that based on 
the prophets. You're uncomfortable with it, even though you come out as gay later. <laughs> yes, I'm clearly the most. My character is clearly the most homophobic in the story, mm -hmm. which we then uh, retroactively yeah, uh, capitalized capitalized on, on seven seasons later when yeah. we realized, oh wow. But if we did, we did take a look through the behavior of the of the character over multiple seasons and thought, oh, this is pretty demonstrative of something. Yeah, and then we 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 lean into that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, man. We're yeah. getting our sea legs. You know what I mean? No, we gotta, it's all right. Yeah, we got to get our yeah. sea legs here. Yeah. Well, let's, we we should take some calls. Let's take calls? some calls. Let's let's take some, who's, on the, call? who's on the line? <laughs> Megan. Uh, yeah. Let's take the first caller, who's, Megan. Who's on the line? Who we got? Hello. Oh uh, yeah, I saw your uh, first episode. Yeah. What would uh, you think? Uh, it was pretty boring, and it mostly sucked. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah that sounds good. Um, and I loved it, and then I watched all of 14 seasons. I wonder, if is there anybody, uh, at one point... Uh, that was not a guys, caller, by the way. That was, <laughs> that was Glenn. That was Glenn. <laughs> at, one point, at one point, you guys looked over, and Charlie, you said, like, how could anybody watch this episode and be like, okay, great, I'm in. Mm -hmm. I'm right, watch yeah. the next 14 years of the show, because... There are truly some repugnant. Last <laughs> no, and nobody is tougher on the show than us, though. I think. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I think. I think for. I don't. I, I can't. I have a hard time watching that first season. I, it's Same. not even because I necessarily think it's bad. I think I just don't know. And I, and my my sensibilities have changed so much since we did that. I just I look at everything and I go, oh God, I would never do that now as yeah. an actor, as a writer, or any mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. any of it. I would never do any of that now. Uh, so, so it's hard for me to stand by it knowing that I would never, yeah. I would never do that now. Yeah. And, and yet somehow people keep watching it and I don't know why. <laughs> I truly don't understand. Well, are there people out there, do you come across like fans who talk about like season one as being one of their favorite seasons? I don't, no. I, I don't know. No, I don't think so. I no, think, no, I feel no, like so. people are like, oh, you're finding it. I, there's... There's some great stuff in season one, some great moments, some great ideas about what the show is going to be. Wasn't this, yes, this was the season where we had Anheuser-Busch. They heard that we were making a show about a bar oh, yes. on FX. Yes. And they and they were like, great, we're going to be the official beer of They're Patty's like, We're in. We're, we're fully in. in. So we shot the whole first season with all this signage everywhere with um, Anheuser-Busch. Uh, Bud, Bud Light. Bud Light signs everywhere. Yeah. And then we aired the first episode and the next day. FX got a call. And, and they're we're, like, we're fully out. We're fully out. And FX goes, we already shot the entire season with all of the signage. And Anheuser-Busch was like, I'm sorry, please, we're out. Please sorry, blur it or we'll destroy you. Yeah, we're out. And then our our position was, fuck you. You guys had the scripts. You read the scripts. Yeah. Then you should be fully in. And then FX was like, no, fuck you. <laughs> But isn't we it? have a relationship with them, like Big Fox, like News Corp had a big relationship yeah, with them yeah, for yeah. the Super Bowl and, and and NFL football. And so we had to go in and digitally change them all to gobbledygook. Yeah. Yeah, it was just, it was just like, yeah, beer. Isn't yeah. it generic. weird, though, now to watch the show 15 years later and be like, Budweiser gets it. <laughs> they were right. Uh, yeah. They were right. right. They were right to get their asses out of there. They're like, nah. when did When did Coors come on board? Because then Coors was, doesn't care. Coors. Coors. <laughs> Coors. Course came on board board years later once once audiences started to pick up oh. on, on what we're yeah, doing. Yeah. So they were like it's a better business plan. <laughs> yeah. It is, yeah. 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 Let's wait until we are, know that. Are people, people enjoying this? Yeah. yeah. They, Great. We'll advertise. Yeah. And I, I think our position was like, no, you guys don't understand. This is satire. And then they were like, I don't think you guys know what satire is. And we were like, Yeah, maybe not. We are too dumb. We'll show you. <laughs> then 15 years later. Mr. We did. Mr. Anderson, can you tell us what satire is? <laughs> what is it? What fuck. even is it? Get the fuck out of here, Hack. I hear ya. <laughs> so what else about this first episode that you guys remember? I remember I was extremely sick shooting all those Philly scenes that year. Well, you were <laughs> always in a, a state of sick in terms of like starving yourself, eating I don't think I was doing pepper. that yet. Was that season no, that two? Season that's two. season two. Because we do a whole episode. Oh, season yeah. Two, yeah. yeah. That's right. No, the first season, you, you hadn't lost your mind yet. No. Season one, we were all in the same trailer. And by trailer, I mean closet. One room. Yes, one room. One teeny tiny little room. And uh, yeah, we were all stuffed in there. That was outrageous. That was out an outrageous the thing. The things that we didn't know we could ask for, like um, an office to write the show. Yeah, we didn't have an office. We didn't have an office. We're writing out of the house. 
of the we house. Didn't have, we like, didn't have trailers. A, we didn't have proper like yeah dressing rooms or trailers anywhere to go. Just a, a room we shared. I yeah. didn't a own a computer until yeah. the oh, second Jesus. season. So we would write on your computer. I would write my shit out on a yellow legal pad. You wrote a version of uh, Charlie Wants an Abortion on a yellow legal pad. I did. Didn't you? Yeah. I did at the Astro Diner. I still have that legal pad. Do you? I should turn it into an I, NFT. You know, <laughs> oh my God. I, ha I actually fungible. have. It's fungible. I actually have a whole notebook of all of our original notes and some shorthand episodes written and yeah, all kinds of shit. Did we have an episode that we ended up scrapping? Yeah. I remember it was one of the first episodes that I was writing, and it was an episode about Sweet D dating a Middle Eastern guy and us being convinced that he was a terrorist. Right. Just in a typical, you know, sunny, <laughs> you know, profiling episode. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember why we didn't, why we ended up, maybe it just wasn't good. It probably just wasn't good enough. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I'd never written anything in my fucking life. It made no sense for me to be writing a television show. I still don't know why I'm allowed to. Maybe that's why they didn't give us offices. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These guys don't know what they're doing. They're not going to get an office. I mean, I, I definitely did not know what I was doing at all. It's crazy. Do you feel confident about writing an episode this year? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I have a little bit of a better idea of how to do it, <laughs> but uh, still not totally sure. How about when we all got to know each other? Because people ask me this from time to time. They're like, when did you guys get to know each other? And I no longer know. I do. I do. I remember meeting you, Rob, mm -hmm. on, a, on a flight. Mm -hmm. And we were both being flown out to test for a pilot. Mm -hmm. Glenn, I have no idea when I met you. I don't know. <laughs> you Talk know Everlasting. Yeah, I do remember. The Tuck Everlasting uh, Tuck audition? Everlasting audition I do was the remember. first time I met you. Yeah, I, that thought, was I thought that's when I York? might have We were it. all there at the same time. They With Chris Palaha. every guy that w was living in New York City. I remember I walked back to NYU or somewhere with Chris Palaha after mm -hmm. that audition. Yeah. Wait, then I walked with you because I maybe remember you walking like to like Subway. With Palaha? Yeah, with Palaha. And maybe you. You don't remember me? No, I kind of <laughs> remember you, but like that's such a vague, you know, that's not a big. Palaha was taller and much more striking. And then, true. And then when, but when did we hang again? Not till we were. Well, out. so, so you and I both auditioned for that 80s show. Uh, yes. And yes. We, we, we came out to LA and we tested. And what happened was we both tested for it. I was testing though for one character and you were testing for like my best friend. Yes, I, that's correct. And then you, <laughs> this is actually <laughs> funny because I remember you were like, I got to get, you, you were like going back to your hotel or something. You were like, I got to get back to my hotel and I guess I'm going to call a cab. And I was like, oh, I'll drive you. And you, and you were like, you, you have a car? And I was like, yeah, they gave me a, they gave me a rental car. And you were <laughs> like, they did? <laughs> yeah. and I, you were, you were like yeah. surprised that oh. they, they were like, oh, okay. okay. You gave guess you a rental car. The, the best friend character, the rental <laughs> car. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, right. I remember we were driving away from the Fox lot, which is so crazy. This, this is where we're this now. Dri driving down Pico. I get a call from my agent, Stephanie Ritz, at the time, Endeavor, and you were also with Endeavor. Uh -huh. Stephanie calls me. She's like, you got it. You got the part. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, that's incredible. Holy shit. I just booked the lead in a half-hour comedy. That's amazing. And I was like, you know what? Uh, actually, Charlie's right next to me. You got any news for him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she was uh -huh. like, there was like a little pause, and then she was like, yeah, put Charlie on. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just heard, and I handed you the phone, and I heard you like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I didn't fucking care. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you had tested for like sixteen pilots. Yeah, by then I was like, "This is what you do. You you go, you read. They think you're weird, and then and then you lose, and then you lose. <laughs> and then you lose. Uh, how it yeah. goes, Rob? I have a distinct memory of you and I. So I used to record those IFC. Oh God! Things and yes. and I, coming up on IFC, it's Dario Argento's whatever. So being at a place called Buzzies on Melrose, where mm -hmm. I did all the things, and you met me. We had coffee across the street from Buzzies, and we were, had a conversation about like we should just make our own fucking yeah, thing because yeah. we're sitting around waiting for. But was that after happen. we had been hanging out at your apartment with you and Jimmy Simpson, and you guys showed us all those really super weird in-camera edited movies that you guys made in New York City? You and Jimmy Simpson and Nate Mooney yeah. and David Hornsby yeah. and, and Logan Marshall, and Logan Green. Marshall Green, yeah. Green made all these super weird, really fucking funny short movies. And I remember I remember yeah. sitting there watching those with you, Rob, and yeah. both of us were like, oh my God, this shit is so fucking funny. Yeah. You know, that it's like, it was the 2000 equivalent of TikToks or like- uh, Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like YouTube videos, like there was no YouTube, so we just- It was just for you guys, just right? Just to show yeah. your friends. 
Yeah, yeah, just. To, but Jimmy did put a couple up on YouTube, and I stand by them. I think they're super yeah, fun. I don't know if they're still later. there. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but <laughs> but so that conversation, I don't remember where in the timeline it happened, but it was very before, early. Yeah, before we were actually doing the show. Yes, before we were doing the show, and I was like writing screenplays and like trying yeah, to get. I remember the, that. I remember distinctly going over to Charlie and Jimmy's apartment with a bunch of actor friends of ours to uh, do a uh, reading. Of, like a well known, I'm sure. Like I mean, I know it was like a bunch of well known people. Yeah. Pacino. Al, yeah, yeah, Pacino, Pacino was there. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and De Niro was there. And then you knew Paul Thomas Anderson, so you invited <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, he was there. Yeah. He was directing. I had, Bo I had Booger there. Um, no, but uh, but I remember uh, like sitting around and doing a, a like a quote-unquote table read, like just a, a round table read with, of... Uh, Billie Jean. Yeah, Billie Jean. Yeah. Yeah. And did Lynn, <laughs> did Lynn Collins play Billie Jean? Yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah, Billie Jean. It was something I wrote with, with Bacchus. With and, Bacchus, yeah. yeah. And I remember it being pretty funny. And yeah, I was like, oh, I think it was we, good. Can, we can do this. But then it's so hard to get anything through to the machine. So you'd right. send it to somebody and they'd be like, oh, I'll read it. And then three weeks later, they'd just forget about it. And that'd yeah. be the end of it. And so then, you you know, watching Charlie's home movies, so I, I was just do it. like, what the fuck? Why are we waiting for somebody else? Let's just make just it ourselves. It. Yeah. Also, the, the British office, the, the like, yes, the run and gun look of that, the cheap, the cheap look of it yeah. to be like, oh, right. And curb. And, and curb. And curb, yeah, and the invention of that Panasonic DVX 100A, mm -hmm. like that camera looked it, like those shows. Yes, it was the first time that you could have like a consumer grade camera mm -hmm. that didn't look like a videotape, like VHS. Mm -hmm. It looked like closer to what we understood as film, and so we thought, oh wow, we can fake this a little bit better. Yeah, yeah so it was like the difference between like those home movies I was doing with Jimmy. He was doing those. We're shooting those on like a little tiny Sony digital thing mm -hmm. that he'd gotten the money from that Amy Heckerling movie Loser. He had a big part in that, and he put like all his money into like uh, renting an apartment that like <laughs> the landlord was a crackhead. It was above a Grace Papaya. It smelled like hot dogs the whole time. <laughs> and and uh, and this and this video camera. But then the Panasonic, you shot something, and you're like, but this looks. Yeah, I mean, like in, a TV show, like a TV show. Yeah. Right, right. This looks professional. Yes, of I, course. You look at it now, and it looks like absolute terrible. trash. The shows but always look terrible. At the time, it really felt like, wow, we're we can make something look good. And that look spilled over into the pilot that was shot with FX. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, and I remember uh, us insisting. We were like, we came in, you know, guns blazing. We were like, this is how we want to shoot the show. And every director, everybody we talked to, were like, that's fucking crazy. You can't shoot it that way. That makes no sense. And we were like, well, we can, because we just did. We did with nothing, with no resources. Yeah, just, no, no lights, no marks. No just, lights, no yeah. marks, just, you know. And we even resisted. In that whole first season, we did not allow our, our director of photography to put marks down. I, I think most people know what that is at this point, probably. But It's a little piece of tape you put on the ground uh, where the actor is supposed to stand, because the light is perfect for that. Yeah, the there. light's or, right. Or you got to be in focus. Block the other actor in the shot. Right. Or, or you're not going to catch the other camera if you got yeah. two cameras rolling or whatever. But I remember the main thing people took exception to was that we wanted to shoot three cameras at all times. We had one person oh, shooting wide, shooting a right. wide master. And then if it was a two person scene, we had somebody shooting, you know, say it was a scene between me and Rob. It'd be Maybe right. One, one camera and, on Rob, and, one camera on me, and one sh camera shooting the master. Even at the, at the time, we were making our thing and then we would, we would shoot, right? And then we would go and we'd look at it, cut together, and we'd be like, Something's weird. They're just looking at each other, but it looks like one's looking in one direction, one's looking in the other. Oh, and we shit. had to figure out in real time. Oh, we didn't know the, we didn't line? Understand the line. line. Yeah, like we just didn't know. We just started doing it. And now and I don't remember that. Yeah, I, I, I thought remember, I don't remember that I, either. In but fact, I if you it. yeah, if you look at the first one, there's mm. some weird eyeline things that don't yeah. make any sense. We're crossing the and line. We didn't yeah. know why because we had no fucking idea what we were doing. Yeah. 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 Also, we were not shooting it to sell it. I don't know where yeah. your head was at, but I, I know for me, I was like, oh, I just want to shoot a funny home movie like what Charlie and those guys did in New York and just just to show people to make my friends laugh. And in my mind, it was like, we're shooting like this little short film thing. And then yeah. I remember we looked at it and we were like, it's weird. It feels like a TV show. Yep. Because that was not the original intention. No, no. It was remember to see something all the way through. Concerned we were with white balancing. Oh yes. my God! Yeah, you know, yes. trying to make it the was two cameras like white yes. we got a white balance. We got to oh, white shit. balance these cameras, man. This is everything. Otherwise, the two shots don't look the same. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah. Well, at least we had the presence of mind. At least we knew how to do well, that. Yeah, we didn't know. We make it sound like we didn't know anything, but we like we knew some stuff. Oh, you know? just the bare minimum. We had a boom. Mm. We knew enough to have a boom. 
No. Well, we didn't have a real, we had a directional had a, mic that we turned into a boom mic. That's by a boom. Hanging it we had a directional the, mic hanging from a broomstick. Yeah, it was a broom. We had a broom, I said. What did you hear? <laughs> <laughs> What do you guys have for breakfast? <laughs> this is what they, they don't want to hear about the show. They just want to hear this kind of shit. <laughs> the Rock would say what he had for breakfast. <laughs> I had nothing. You didn't eat anything for breakfast? No. What's the first? What, Are you intermittent You're fasting? wondering why you're, you have a, you're having stomach problems. What time did you eat for the first time today? I ate for the first time today when we had lunch. Charlie. Did you have coffee? I had a ton of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But coffee doesn't really bother my stomach. Cheese, no does. cheese, just cheese. We made this clear. You can't drink. Uh, Rob can't drink. I coffee. don't drink coffee. Anymore. I just sometimes I'll have breakfast, but today I didn't. I was running out the door. Okay, you know. Right. What um, what kind of what do you bench? <laughs> <laughs> my my bench has gone down significantly since COVID. It got up. I, I got it up there, but I'd be yeah. I have no idea. I have no, idea. I have no idea what I can bench. No clue. Three chairs. I think it's okay for a forty-four year old man not to know what he can bench. I think it's Are you best. 45? I'm 45, yeah. Oh my I wasn't going to say it. So am I. Crazy. So am I. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. 45. so weird. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. How old were we when we started doing this shit? 27 years old. I know I was 27 when we shot the original home movie. And then 28 when we shot the FX pilot. Yeah. Right. So we like to think that we were like super no, young, but we, weren't. we really weren't. Like no. the Beatles had broken up by the time they were 26. Most so. people, most well, artists we're had start done their comparing best. comparing ourselves work. to the Beatles. We're going to have a <laughs> hard time here. No, we're going to have a hard day's night. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys, most artists, I would say, had probably done their best work by the time we started this show. <laughs> they were like well past it. We were just warming up. And that, and that feels like <laughs> a lifetime ago. You never want to peak too soon, man. Because it was. Yeah, because it was. Well, we can't old. remember any any of it. But that's yeah. the Pinot Grigio and the Bourbon for mm-hmm. me. Pinot yeah. Grigio and Bourbon. Well, I don't mix them together. But there was a period of my life, a good eight years, where I drank Pinot Grigio, Ugh. and now I don't drink that anymore. I just drink Bourbon now. Do you? Yeah. You switch you, Bourbon. I switch to Bourbon. Yeah, I drink Bourbon. I don't know you to be a Bourbon. I wasn't a Bourbon drinker until um the until we all locked down for for the global pandemic. Okay, we don't have to go into it on the podcast, but I want to hear about the Bourbons that you're into. Are you super into it? Or are you I'm, drinking? I'm like, super into it. No, you I, are. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I've got a couple of recommendations. For okay, you. okay. Yeah. Maybe they'll be sponsors. Hey, yeah. You know what I really have been into is rye whiskey. I'll drink. Um, I'll drink some rye. I really like a. I don't know. Something about rye. I don't like it when my liquors are too sweet. So like a lot of tequilas are too agave forward, if you will. Mm. Uh, I want a dry experience. <laughs> I would submit that some people do want to hear this, Charlie. No, no, no. I'm sure they do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to talk about something. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. It's 73 degrees out. It's sunny. <laughs> Los Angeles today. The, avi- uh, the available uh, Wi-Fi network is Fox and Friends. Uh, <laughs> just talking about your phone. <laughs> just talking about your phone. Just looking at your phone. Well, guys, this has been fun. I like uh, talking about whiskey. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, I thought that was cool. I you ever had a Japanese whiskey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. They're making some yeah. good ones these days. Yeah. I went to Japan. It was awesome. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. You still have cats? Yeah. One. <laughs> I got one. Is it, are, uh, one of those cats is still alive? Yeah. Being still alive. 19 years old. That's insane. She's old as shit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I remember you getting those cats. I, yeah. I, I, I'm surprised she hasn't had a heart attack from the dogs at this point, honestly. That's a tough thing. Like 18 years into a cat's life, just bring in two dogs. Yeah, bring in a couple dogs and, yeah, they just want to gobble her up. It's, cat's like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, man? What are you doing? Yeah. She, it was really funny. Every time she takes a shit, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> you might want to get that checked. You might want to get that. Oh, there's no getting it checked at this point. It's like yeah, you're 19. Yeah. Everything's gonna fucking hurt. But oh. it it like something every time she takes a shit, she's like, <laughs> I'm concerned about your cat, I man. Man, have you talked? I'll to take a vet it in to get checked. Have you talked to a vet about this? I mean, but no. is she in pain? I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> She might be in ecstasy. Listen, cut guys, that, she might that, be. Cut that, 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 cut that. She might be in ecstasy, guys. She might be in ecstasy. So you're saying you can't tell the difference whether a female is in pain or in ecstasy. Aren't they the same thing? Cut that, 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 cut that.